Have you ever seen a giant ship? It's huge. It can weigh over 100,000 tons. So, how does something that big stay in one spot in the water? Most people think it's all about the anchor. They imagine a giant heavy piece of metal that just digs into the sea floor and stops the ship cold. It's a good guess, but it's not the whole story. An anchor is heavy for sure. A big one can weigh as much as 15 cars all stacked together, around 23,000 kilograms. But for a ship that massive, just being heavy isn't nearly enough to hold it still against powerful winds and ocean currents. The anchor's real job is actually much simpler and, well, cooler. Think of it not as a brake, but as a hook. Its main purpose is to grab onto the seabed and act as a fixed point. It's like putting a thumbtack in a bulletin board. The thumbtack itself isn't holding up a giant poster, it's just providing a secure spot for something else to attach to. The anchor does the same thing for the ship. It digs its sharp arms, called flukes, deep into the mud or sand on the ocean floor. Once it's dug in, it holds the end of a very, very long chain. So, if the anchor isn't stopping the ship with its own weight, what is? The secret lies in what the anchor is attached to. The real hero of holding a ship in place is the anchor chain. The anchor is just the final connection point, the little hook at the very end of a much bigger system. When a ship needs to stay put, the crew doesn't just drop the anchor straight down, they drop it and then let out a huge amount of chain while the ship moves backward. This process is key to everything. Dropping an anchor isn't like hitting the brakes in a car, it's a careful planned process. The ship slowly lowers the anchor to the bottom of the sea. Once it's there, the ship keeps letting out more and more chain. This isn't just to make sure it reaches the bottom, it's to create a special shape and use the chain's incredible weight to do the real work. The anchor is just the first part of a fascinating science puzzle that keeps colossal ships from drifting away. The real magic happens with all that chain lying on the seabed. Let's talk about the anchor chain. If the anchor is the hook, the chain is the muscle. And it has a lot of muscle. A single link in an anchor chain can weigh about 160 kilograms, which is heavier than a grand piano. Now, imagine a chain made of hundreds of these links. The total weight of an anchor and its full chain can be around 243,000 kilograms. That's as heavy as a fully grown blue whale. This incredible weight is what really holds a ship in place, and it does it in two clever ways. First, a long part of the chain lies flat on the seabed. Think of it like a giant paperweight. All that weight creates a huge amount of friction with the sand or mud. When the wind or current tries to push the ship, it first has to drag this super heavy length of chain across the seafloor. It's like trying to pull a rug with a whole bunch of heavy books piled on top of it. It's very, very difficult to move. This friction alone does a lot of the work to keep the ship from drifting around. The second way the chain works is even more amazing. The part of the chain between the ship and the seabed doesn't go in a straight line. It forms a gentle curve called a catenary. This curve acts like a giant shock absorber or a big, heavy rubber band. When a strong gust of wind or a big wave pushes the ship, the force doesn't pull directly on the anchor. Instead, the force is used to try and lift the heavy chain off the seafloor and straighten that curve. This absorbs all the jerky movements, turning a big, sudden push into a slow, gentle tug. Because of this catenary curve, the anchor at the end almost never feels a sharp pull. It just feels a steady, gentle force, pulling it horizontally, which keeps it dug securely into the seabed. To retrieve the anchor, the ship uses its engines to move directly over it. A machine called a windlass then pulls the chain straight up. This vertical pull uses the anchor's own shape as a lever to break its flukes free from the mud. It's a brilliant piece of engineering that uses weight and physics to do its job perfectly. Where a ship drops its anchor is super important. You can't just drop it anywhere and expect it to work. The type of ground on the bottom of the sea, called the seabed, makes all the difference. Imagine trying to push a tent stake into concrete versus pushing it into soft dirt. It's the same idea for a ship's anchor. The crew uses special maps called nautical charts that tell them what the seabed is made of. They are always looking for the perfect spot to get a good grip. The best kind of seabed for an anchor is thick mud or sticky clay. When the anchor hits this kind of ground its flukes can dig in deep and get a really strong hold, like claws grabbing into soft earth. 
Sand is also a decent option, though sometimes the anchor might drag a little before it finds a solid grip. The goal is for the anchor to bury itself completely, so that the chain is pulling on it horizontally. This ensures the anchor uses its shape to hold on tight, rather than just being a dead weight. On the other hand, some seabeds are terrible for anchoring. The worst kind, is solid rock. If an anchor is dropped onto a flat rocky bottom, it will just skate and slide across the surface without ever digging in. The ship would just drift away as if it had no anchor at all. A seabed covered in thick seaweed or kelp is also bad news, because the anchor's flukes get tangled in the plants instead of reaching the solid ground underneath. The crew has to be very careful to avoid these spots. To make sure the anchor is holding, the crew lets out the chain and then watches the ship's position very carefully. If the ship continues to drift, they know the anchor is dragging. This means they have to pull it all back up and try again in a different spot. It's a bit of trial and error, but it's critical for the safety of the ship, its crew, and its cargo. Finding that perfect patch of mud or sand is a key skill for any ship captain. In action movies you sometimes see a cool trick, a big ship, trying to make a sharp turn, drops its anchor at high speed, the chain goes tight, and the back of the ship whips around in a dramatic handbrake turn. It looks awesome on screen but in the real world it's pure fiction. It's a fun idea, but it completely ignores the science of how anchors and chains actually work. Trying this maneuver in real life would lead to a disaster, not a cool stunt. Let's think about what would really happen. Remember that catenary curve, the shock absorber? If you drop an anchor while moving fast, there's no time to form that curve. The chain would snap tight almost instantly. In the best case scenario, the force would be too much for the seabed. The anchor would be ripped right out of the ground and would just bounce and drag along the bottom, doing almost nothing to slow or turn the massive ship. The ship would just keep going, now with a very long, very heavy chain dragging behind it. In the worst case scenario, something much more dramatic would happen. Imagine if the anchor managed to snag on something incredibly strong, like a huge rock formation. The ship is tens of thousands of tons of moving metal. All of that incredible momentum would be transferred down the chain in a split second. The chain, as strong as it is, cannot handle that kind of sudden, immense force. It would snap instantly, probably at the connection point on the ship, sending a broken multi-ton chain flying. So, the next time you see a ship anchor on screen, you'll know the truth. It's not a break, and it's definitely not for stunts. It's the starting point for a brilliant system of weight and friction. The anchor and its mighty chain work together as a team. The anchor provides the grip, and the massive weight of the chain provides the holding power and shock absorption. It's a simple, yet incredibly effective piece of science that allows the largest objects humans have ever built to rest safely at sea. Consider it. Science.